corporations are people, my friend. I like being able to fire people who provide services to me. I'll tell you what. <laughs> 10,000 bucks? $10,000 bet? I get speaker's fees from time to time, but not very much. <laughs> I'm not concerned about the very poor. That's the effective rate I've been paying. It's probably closer to the 15% rate than anything. I pay a lot of taxes. I've been very successful. I drive a Mustang and a, uh, and a Chevy pickup truck. Ann drives a, a couple of Cadillacs, actually. I have some great friends that are uh, NASCAR uh, uh, team owners. They also tell my story. I'm also unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> so we went to the company and we said, look, you can't have any illegals working on our property. That's, I'm running for office for Pete's sake. I can't have illegals. It turns out that once again they hired someone who had falsified their documents, had, had documents, and therefore we fired them. I know what it's like to, to worry whether you're going to get fired. There were a couple of times I wondered whether I was going to get a pink slip. Don't try and stop the foreclosure process. Let it run its course and hit the bottom. All right. So Mitt's got a little problem relating. Uh, and he heard him that he likes to fire people, <laughs> willing to make an impromptu $10,000 bet here and get ready to add one more incredibly tone-deaf moment. Now, this one, I got to tell you, he had to plan this. He had to think this one through. And for the life of me, he's a really smart guy. And I don't think he's got a cruel bone in his body, but to think this through and do it might say something more than just, what was he thinking? In the middle of a campaign, in the middle of one of the deepest recessions in recent memory, in the middle of trying desperately to relate to the American public to say, I feel your pain, he's renovating a house, and not just any house. A sprawling home in the upscale La Jolla neighborhood of San Diego, and the McMansion's gonna, it's probably more well done than that, but it's gonna have an outdoor shower, 3,600 square foot basement, and wait for it, a car elevator. The car lift will be used to transport automobiles between floors. Oh, and the project comes with its own lobbyist hired by Romney to push the plan through the approval process. Okay. Uh, uh, let me bring in our guest here and to talk presidential <laughs> politics, not just Mitt's car elevator, but beyond <laughs> journalist, author, and historian uh, articles. They've appeared in uh, uh, New York uh, Times, Harper's, Washington Post, and most recently, you may have seen his piece, and we'll talk about it uh, in the next segment, uh, appeared in the Times, The Outsource Party, and explores the identity crisis of the parter. Kevin Baker, thank you very much. Now, Thanks for having me. Again. Um, I remember when, uh, you know, we saw Senator <laughs> Kerry having trouble to relate when he's windsurfing on yes. the campaign trail. And, but the guy had a plan to build a house. Yeah. I, this is, is it just me or is this just, uh, what was he thinking? What Wait, council was there? Why, you don't have a car elevator? Oh, I know I do. <laughs> um, <laughs> not even renovating the house. He's tearing down the perfectly good house that's on the property and then building a new one right on top of it. Uh, it's, it's kind of amazing. The lobbyist is great, too. Look, and there's numbers here um, that articulate what I'm saying, which is you got a very vulnerable president, I think, here. And whether there's no such thing as a perfect candidate. But look at where we are right now in this latest snapshot between President Obama and Mitt Romney. And remember, the argument for Mitt Romney, that's catch, by the way, was <laughs> his electability. Okay, that's what he convinced the conservative base. Bring up the numbers if you would, guys. The, the conservative base said, hey, you may not love me, but head to head with Obama, I'm your best shot. He's down 11 points. 12. 12. 12. I, I'm doing 11. my math here. Wow. Don't kill me, Andrew. <laughs> I can add. You know what? And, I can't. <laughs> yeah, okay. And at the same time, McCain was down a point to Obama if you go back four years ago. Now, by the way, Santorum, for all the Looney Tunes stuff, it's about the same exact thing, the same spread between Obama and himself. Kevin, he's got a problem here. Uh, and, and, and I got to tell you, as much as uh, it looks like Gingrich is disappearing, his argument to say, if they don't get a magic number, we got 60 days between the last primary and Tampa, somebody yeah. can make a compelling argument. He's not one of us, and he doesn't even give us our best shot. What are we doing with this guy? Oh, he's in huge trouble if he doesn't wrap it up by June. I think he will, but if he doesn't, going you know, that long a time, you're just waiting for Gingrich and Santorum or somebody else to kind of join up and, and say, that's not do just we really a West want to Wing do this? episode. That could right, happen, right? right? It really could. But, like but, but you know, but you're talking about episodes and you guys are wondering what I'm smoking, but I'm telling you, this is a game change moment again. McCain went with Sarah Palin because he had to do something desperate in order to win. And I'm telling you, 
Mr. Romney is in the same predicament. It wouldn't surprise me if he didn't beg Colin Powell, and I don't think Colin Powell would do it, but to run on his ticket. Poor Mitt Romney. I call him Mr. One Two, <laughs> as I've said consistently. One step forward, two steps backwards. Maybe there's a small part of Mitt Romney that doesn't really want to be president, but he's put got all this off pressure the house, on him. Put off but, updating the House until after the election. But you know what? I don't think this is a problem for him going into Tampa. There's no way he's not going to be the nominee. There's just no way. They, the, the, imagine just being a run-of-the-mill Republican voter, having Mitt Romney have 900 okay. delegates but Andrew, and you not and be the nominee. you and I spend our lifetime right. doing this. What do you think happens if he hasn't gotten a magic number for the 60 days? Be what do you think the, sp the spin cycle is going to be? I, All we're going to be talking about is, is there a white knight that they're going to bring in? You're going to have disgruntled delegates saying, you know what? Um, if I'm not going to at least get a conservative, I'd rather lose with some of them going down swing. First of all, th and this story just moved uh, from the Associated Press before we went on the air, but Romney admitted today that he's been meeting regularly with Newt Gingrich throughout the, the course of this campaign. Which may explain why Newt Gingrich is still running for president when he can't possibly <laughs> yeah. win. And his entry in the race... Was, Madison just pulled the fund. Exactly. Right. But his continuation in the race helps Romney because it, it holds off Santorum. But, but putting that aside, there are, way, there are deals to be struck. There are, there are members of the Republican hierarchy who will come aboard and, and right. get well, Romney well, over well, the, the top. The answer question, Kevin, but, is, yeah. is his problem, Romney's, the base right now? Or is it relating to those undecideds out there? Not the hard right. But folks who say, hey, I want a job, and I want the guy who's going to give me the best chance to get employed right now, and I want to be more comfortable about the economy going forward. Is it, which population is it? Because it's two different messages. Well, I think it's both. I think he uh, turns off the base, and at the same time, it's very, he's very, has a very difficult time distinguishing himself from Obama. You know, he's like, uh, no, no, I had Romney care, not Obamacare. You know, yeah, I right. mean, find me the difference. You know, I, I think that's his, his basic difficulty. I think the question is, what does he come up with? for a game change. And I think the guy he's going to be begging to run with him is Marco Rubio. He doesn't seem like he's, but, he's uh, taking the bait right I don't now. Know if he'll, I don't know if he'll do it. You know. By the way, I actually think it's, it's less, I don't think it's as issue oriented or does his, do his positions line up with the base. I think it's just comfortable. Com people aren't comfortable with Mitt Romney. He's the guy who shows up at the party who tries to be best friends with everybody. He just leaves a sour taste in people's mouths. and and. You know, he's he's the rich guy who's doing everything in his mind, yeah. everything he can, not to, not to act rich. Right, right now, as we're almost in April.